Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. In under a week, on March 17th, the Dutch are heading to the polls. Specifically, the Netherlands will be voting for the 150 seats in the second chamber, after which they'll be tasked with installing a new government. The Dutch system is quite unique, as we discussed in a recent video about their proportional representation electoral system. Because of this, according to current polls, the country might be headed towards an impossible coalition puzzle. So in this video, we'll talk you through the election, the likely outcomes, and why the results could be important internationally. If you like our videos and want to see more from us, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. If you really want to support us, then you can sign up to our Patreon, where you get a whole bunch of perks, as well as the knowledge that you're helping us make more content. The link's down below. Thanks so much for your support. The upcoming national elections in the Netherlands are important. Internally, the centre-right VVD has been the largest party for over a decade now, and Prime Minister Mark Rutte has been in power since 2010. Although the Dutch are now voting for a parliament, rather than directly for the head of the new government, if the VVD wins again, Rutte will continue to serve until 2025. Rutte is already one of the longest serving heads of government in the EU, and as such is one of the most experienced figures in the 27. Furthermore, the Netherlands are a prominent member of the influential alliance the Frugal Four, as well as one of the richest member states and one of the greatest net contributors. As such, the Dutch leader and the country's commitment to the EU as a whole is essential to the bloc. So a change here, a shift in power away from the man at the centre of EU politics for over a decade, well, that really would be a big deal. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, let's take a look at the parties in the running. As is so often the case in Europe, there's no shortage of parties to discuss. On the political right, you'll find the VVD, a party traditionally focused on individual liberty and market economics, and the largest contender as Russia's own party. Despite its traditional roots, the party seems to have shifted away from neoliberalism and towards a more constrained approach to market economics. They advocate for policies which reduce burdens on the middle class and medium-large businesses, in exchange for greater societal responsibilities for companies. They also propose investment boosts for infrastructure and healthcare, which the VVD says has been left to market influences for too long. The VVD's position on individual rights is strong, but it's been a challenging area during the pandemic. The struggle has hit other parties harder though, with the Forum for Democracy largely collapsing after internal unrest, with large groups separating to form the new JA21 party. Nonetheless, the Forum will likely appeal to those who deeply resent the government's Covid restrictions, and JA21 might eat away at some of the VVD's more conservative electorate. Another threat for the governing VVD comes from the right-wing Party for Freedom, in particular, the PVV is very strong on migration, the EU and multiculturalism, and proposes steps towards a process they call de-Islamification. This includes stripping citizens with double passports of voting rights, a prohibition of all Islamic teachings, and a ban on migrants from Islamic countries. As you can see, the PVV seeks to appeal to the culturally conservative and nationalist on the political right. However, from an economic point of view, the PVV leans towards the left, so it's not yet clear to what extent the PVV really is a threat to the governing VVD. Nonetheless, current polls suggest that the PVV could bag between 17 and 24 seats, a number which would see them become the nation's second largest party. Regardless, it's highly unlikely that the PVV will end up in government, as almost all other parties have excluded cooperation with the PVV, in light of their relatively extreme right-wing ideas. Looking to the political centre, we can find two other main contenders. Firstly, let's look at the Christian Democratic Party. The CDA's policy bears some similarities to that of the governing VVD. It seeks to create greater economic relief for the middle class and small to medium sized businesses. However, the CDA seems to want to go further in curbing the market in public areas such as health, and go slightly faster on the climate transition than the VVD. 
As a traditionally conservative party, the CDA has more restraint on some social issues such as euthanasia than the VVD does. Another thing the CDA brings to the table is their first candidate, Wubka Hoekstra, the current Minister of Finance and an experienced figure in national politics. He's one of the main candidates as Prime Minister and seeks to present himself as the primary alternative to Russia. Whether this will be successful remains to be seen. However, he definitely could be a threat to the VVD, with recent polls showing that 16% of VVD supporters also consider voting for the CDA. However, in reality, their leader might end up holding them back, with Hoogstra performing worse than expected. This could leave an opening for the CU, as conservative voters that lean more towards the centre-left may find the Christian Union a more feasible alternative, with the CU combining more progressive and a slightly more leftist economic policy with a Christian conservative stance. On the progressive side of the political centre, we find D66, with their female leader, Sigrid Kach, another main contender for the position of PM, with the party really capitalising on their leader, promoting the idea that she could become the country's first female prime minister. Unlike Hoogstra, Kach has performed much better than expected, at least according to recent polling. Despite this, polling suggests that his party as a whole only has a slight lead over the other parties on the progressive side of politics. D66 does offer one of the most ambitious plans for countering climate change though, and proposes to drastically increase public spending in areas such as education and national health. Agriculture is targeted too, with D66 proposing to cut the national cattle stock in half. However, unlike other parties on the left, D66 focuses less on increasing economic safety nets for the lower classes and instead chooses to actively spend on economic relief for the middle classes. D66 is also traditionally at the forefront of multiculturalism and a closer European Union, which differs starkly from the parties on the right. As such, D66 offers a mix of politically progressive and green ideas with a more liberal economic agenda. On the political left, we find three main contenders, the Labour Party, the Socialist Party and the Greens. Traditionally, the PVDA was the largest party on the left, representing the working class, but without some of the socialist policies of the SP or some of the more progressive policies of D66 and the Greens. In line with their traditional policies, the PVDA favours a welfare state model and thus proposes reinforcing social welfare schemes for the lower classes in particular, as well as for the middle classes. They have started to lean more towards the progressive side of politics though, supporting ambitious climate transition plans. However, the PVDA has been reduced to a shadow of its former self, going from 38 to just 9 seats in 2017 and recent polling shows very little sign of recovery. Still, as one of the most centrist of the left parties, the PVDA can play a crucial role in the next governing coalition. By comparison, the Green Party is probably more comparable to some of the more centrist D66 when it comes to their climate agenda and progressive approach to culture and society. The plans of the Greens easily meet the Paris climate goals and actually go even further than that, stressing a commitment to the transition before 2030. However, when it comes to economic policy, they are more comparable to the Labour Party, desiring to increase the economic position of lower classes. Claver is renowned as a young progressive politician, but the movement he kickstarted with the massive growth of the Green Party seems to have stalled recently and competition from the Animal Party is growing, competing fiercely for the progressive electorate in the already heavily divided left. The final party worth mentioning is the Socialist Party. The SP is one of the most left-wing parties of all, introducing more socialist ideas like the National Health Fund. It also proposes greatly increased taxes for those with higher incomes and larger businesses, alongside a more defensive approach to the EU and globalisation. However, with fierce competition from the left, the SP seems to be struggling to gain political momentum. Still, the SP should not be overlooked, in particular as we look at the coalition puzzle that might arise after the election. So that was a very quick and very long rundown of the major players but what's likely to happen after people head to the polls. 
Well, if we can trust current polling data, the VVD are set to win relatively comfortably once again, helped by Rutter's political experience and a general positive attitude towards his COVID response. However, the current government coalition, made up of the VVD, CDA, CU and D66, may struggle to reach the required 76 majority, with some polls only granting them 70 seats. If this ends up being the case, then a victorious VVD may still struggle to get a coalition together, which is able to make up the required 76 seats. This is a problem, because even the previous coalition didn't feature the most comfortable bedfellows. The D66 were pretty apprehensive about joining the pretty conservative coalition, so even if they can scrape together the numbers they need, there's no guarantee that Rutter's coalition will get the D66's support once again. In fact, if the D66 is thinking tactically, rejecting the Conservative coalition could be a good strategy for them. If the VVD aren't able to form a Conservative coalition, then a centre-left coalition becomes a possibility, something that D66 as a centre-progressive party might actually prefer. However, such a centre-left coalition is not going to happen without a fight. For one, while it's not a legal requirement, it's standard procedure that the largest party leads the coalition, so bypassing the likely winners, the VVD, would be controversial. As such, parties like the CDA and CU might not accept this proposed centre-left coalition without the VVD's involvement. Furthermore, the centre-left idea requires a whopping seven parties to cooperate, more than any other coalition in the country's history. This might be entirely unfeasible, and again parties like the CDA might not be particularly enthusiastic about the idea. However, perhaps they could be persuaded to join a centre-left coalition if Hoogstra is promised to become the Prime Minister. After all, out of the seven that would form the centre-left coalition, the CDA may actually be the largest. They're not the only ones with power though. Even if the VVD's existing coalition doesn't reach the threshold after next week's vote, Rutter still has options. He's formed a lot of different coalitions over the course of his career as MP, so undoubtedly he'll be able to go to the table with all of his negotiating experience and could create a surprise coalition, or even a minority cabinet, like the one we saw in 2010. Even if he succeeds with this though, the stability of his leadership is at risk of crumbling over the next few years. Not only is a surprise coalition or a minority coalition prone to instability, several political swords of Damocles are hanging over his head. Discussion about Rutter reaching his political exploration date are growing. After all, having the same Prime Minister for 15 years is very rare. Whispers and rumours aside though, there are three extensive parliamentary inquiries that are set to haunt Rutter in the near future. One on the child benefit scandal that caused thousands of innocent parents into unjustified death, and the role that he played in keeping silent internal ministerial and administrative affairs. One on the earthquakes that resulted in the extraction of natural gas, causing damage to houses. And a third is expected into the Prime Minister's response to Covid. All three of these scandals don't bode well for the Prime Minister, and the political pressure may end up proving to be too great. And if a fourth Rutter cabinet fails, the Dutch might be forced to the ballot once more, and the political arena may change profoundly, perhaps even ending the dominance of the VVD. But all of that lies in the future. Ultimately, it all depends on the coalition maths, and how different voters end up casting their ballots next week. Let us know what you think is going to happen next, and what you think of this whole situation in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.